Are you stuck at home in lockdown? Yeah, I know, we all are. Don't worry, we've got you covered because it's time once again for Live at Night with Pete Ferrero. Don't you want to be like, I don't give a shit. Tom, um, send me your address. I'd be happy to send you a copy. Oh, excellent, yeah. That's awesome, okay. And so, uh, and I and I paid for it, so that's just lovely. No. <laughs> I'm on, okay, what's that? I'm live at night. Where whatever happens, happens. Now along with his special guests, here is your host, Pete Ferrero. Hey everybody, uh, we're live at night and we are talking with some uh, travel industry people here to talk about how the coronavirus is affecting them. Also, uh, we got the cool background for anybody who's been watching live at night and also there'll be a couple pop-ins. That's a new feature where someone just updates us on what's going on in their world and if they had a crazy day or something like that. So we'll see if that happens too today. But anyway, I'm gonna let you all introduce yourselves and say what you've been doing. Um, I think it's usually easier that way, but so we'll start with Jamie. All right, hi everybody, I'm Jamie. Um, I worked on board Carnival cruise ships for 11 years. Oh, look, you're, I'm not the only one with a drink. Okay, perfect, mine mm -hmm. is all water. <laughs> yeah. Does everybody have a drink? Um, Jared yeah, does not I have a drink. Said, I worked no. on cruise ships. I got my no, cruise ships I, I and not. my drink. There you go. Cheers, guys. You can't. I'm, I'm green screening, so I do have a drink. Okay. I feel like uh, Marty McFly in Back to the Future. Right? <laughs> yeah, you look like it. <laughs> you know, Going in and out. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I worked on Carnival ships. Um, I was cruise director there for quite a while, traveling all over the world. I retired from the cruise industry in 2018, and I started working in the hotel industry um, for Howard Hughes Corporation at the Woodlands Resort in the Woodlands, Texas. And then on February 29th, just about a month and a half ago now, I accepted a new position for a Margaritaville resort that's opening up in Texas. So yeah. I'm very grateful. We're still in the preliminary hiring and planning processes, but, uh, yeah, it's this whole situation has been a, a huge effect on the cruise industry on the hotel yeah. industry. I'm sure we'll get into that, but uh, sure. I'm Jamie. Here I am. <laughs> and she's amazing. I've cruised. With oh, thank you. That's how I met her. And, uh, I think I always said that she was the best cruise director that we, uh, no offense to any cruise directors that might be watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I paid him to say that. So. No, uh, she was <laughs> always wonderful and just had a great energy. Anyway, let's Thank go you. to, let's go to Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Manna. Uh, so I still call you Elizabeth Stacy. That's inappropriate. Oh, also known as <laughs> Elizabeth Stacy. <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, so I too come from the, uh, hotel backgrounds. Uh, I was with Western city for, uh, about four and a half years and then my place to a private venue called Maritime Park which is located in Liberty State Park in Jersey City and then uh, stopped over to the Hilton Doubletree for about a year on the corporate side and then I had recently accepted a position as the director of corporate relationships for Landmark Hospitality oh, cool. the company that owns um, a variety of 10 venues throughout northern New Jersey, central New Jersey, and into Pennsylvania. Yeah. And uh, I started there on January 27th and then was furloughed on March 16th. So it was a Very great month and a half. The people were amazing. <laughs> they had beautiful venues. Uh, but uh, now I'm home. So. <laughs> yeah. Jared, how about you? Hi, everyone. So Jared Shulden, Senior Event Manager for Sheraton Midtown, New York. Um, 19 years with Marriott, mostly in meeting and events. Uh, Elizabeth and I actually have worked together for a while. Um, so, and Peter did my wedding. That's right. So that's how I know Both most. Nice. Jamie, yeah. I missed yours. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I, I had a small wedding. <laughs> I know. That's cool. <laughs> um, I've been furloughed since March 20th, so it's been a little hard-pressed. I haven't actually looked at work, known what is going on. Um, but from what I've heard that Sheridan Midtown's got about a thousand rooms on peak starting Monday. So mm. it's good things of what's going on in the city. Um, yeah. a lot of hotels have closed. We have actually stayed open. So. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I want to start with, uh, I want to start with, well, before we get into your industries, how about all of you individually? How is this affecting you and your own lives? And, um, are you happy to be home or? Just give me a little bit of what you're doing with this downtime, Elizabeth. Um, yeah, it was it was uh, kind of surreal when it had initially happened. Uh, I don't think it really quite set in until 
a good week or so mm-hmm. um, because you know at that point in time we didn't really know the severity of it right um, and then as kind of the weeks progressed along I was like okay this is gonna be uh, at home for a while yeah. um, so for me personally um, I've been focused on other things um, I have a I have a plan B so I also work in the travel industry at a home at home based business uh, so focus on that and um, just been uh, reading and cooking and enjoying nice. my family and, uh, you know, just taking it one day at a time and, uh, you know, thankful for my health and, um, yeah. you know, so far, knock on wood, uh, my husband's on the front lines of this. So I wanted to ask uh, you about that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, been a little stressful there, but, um, you know, he's doing well and uh, we're just, keeping prayers for friends and family and hoping that this, um, you know, yeah. soon, so. Okay, Jamie, how about you? What are you doing with this time? Well, I'm still working actually very gratefully from home. Um, I started, as I said, um, February 29th at Margaritaville and we were going into the office till March 29th. And we were doing a lot of jobs that our positions wouldn't necessarily do. We were cleaning out the hotel, throwing away furniture. I was definitely burning my calories, picking up desks and whatever needed to be thrown away um, and happy about it because all my other friends in the travel industry were were out of work. Um, So I'm working from home. My husband works for a garage door company. He's also at home and we have a baby girl. She's 13 months old. And so she's actually still in daycare, which is a little bit scary for me. Yeah, Um, wow. Because I wouldn't be able to get anything done if she were here. Um, And the other, you know, they really have about a sixth of the kids there that were there before. But the other parents are doctors, nurses, frontline workers. So luckily, we're still in good spirits. We're still healthy. Um, And I also have a side job as a travel agent, (laughs) which has been overtaking my time (laughs) right now. I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so it's been a lot of cancellations and rebookings and oh my onboard credits and future cruise credits. And yeah, I remember because I was job. trying to get her to do this and she was like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was I like, ten, I had 10 cancellations yeah. today. Yeah, it's crazy. And you know, and it's yeah. just like waiting on hold for them to help you and yes. filling out forms for our guests, which we're happy to do, but it's right. very time consuming. Yeah. So um, we're, we still have a little bit of normal. Our hotel scheduled to open July 1st. So wow. we'll see how long this progresses. If that's going to be a possibility as we get closer to that date, we'll have more information, but knock on wood right now, we're still working. Yeah. So we're, we're very grateful for that. Okay. And how about you, Jared? What are you doing with this time? Uh, oh, I mean, I mean listen, and for you, Jared, 19 years, you, you know, you, you go in every day. I feel like you are, the, your, your heart beats through the hotel industry, right? In a way. You know? And yeah. so for you to be in this position is sort of unfamiliar and shocking, I would imagine. I mean, as you and Elizabeth know, I mean, my life has changed dramatic, dramatically, but I get to hang out with my three-year-old yeah. um, quite often or a little bit more than I would normally. Um, my wife is ready to strangle me. Um, <laughs> she's, she's still full-time working, so it's definitely a change. She's now, you know, the primary. Um, yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm doing odd jobs here and there just to get myself out of the house every now and then because I'm ready to go crazy. But, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just doing whatever I can, keep keeping myself busy and hopefully yeah. uh you know my boss wants to get get us in sometime may 1st but i doubt mm-hmm. that's realistic now as far as the industries let's get into some of that i want to talk to jamie about the cruise industry because i feel like it's a hot button right i mean literally cruises had to be halted people got the coronavirus on a cruise and whatnot so tell me uh and, and, and it's funny we did a pop up podcast i don't know maybe I went out a couple of months ago and you were talking about what's the most extreme thing that you dealt with. Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. nothing. Nothing's going to top this. this. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So tell me what you know about those kind of things that happened and then tell me how badly uh, or what's happening in the cruise industry at this point. <laughs> Not a lot of cruises. <laughs> um, right. it's, it's, this is the, the most challenging thing they've ever dealt with. 
undoubtedly, you know, there's been situations on one ship, like 9-11, like the Triumph catching fire, but right. never has it been the entire fleet, the entire industry stopping at once. Um, so we know guests from a guest standpoint, their cruises, a lot of them are canceled. Um, the cruise industry has been very generous and trying to help them rebook rather than cancel, which right. I, I know a lot of hotels are doing that, you know, trying to keep the money and mm. get guests to change the timing of their vacation. I think everybody's For, trying to do that in every industry that can be flexible that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And from a crew standpoint, there are a lot of crew members still on board and, um, you know, the crew members for cruise ships come from all over the world. So it's very hard right now. The, the, they can't fly on commercial flights. That's a new rule. So Carnival specifically has been chartering planes to places like Indonesia, the Philippines, India, um, to get these guys home. Yeah. So only essential team members are staying on board. Um, they have been pretty generous to pay them for up to 60 days, um, without guests on board Crazy. but after that it's tough to know thank you my husband's trying to feed me a french fry <laughs> <laughs> i love it yeah well he was on the so you, you could pop in and say hi he was on the Rusty. yeah come here <laughs> Does he do curbside pickup? <laughs> yeah. he, he went to McDonald's, so we're real fancy here. <laughs> but he worked on the cruise ships for a little bit, right? Yeah. I don't want. Can you say hello? No. He's just well, hold up. We have a pop in. Hands. Our first pop in of the night, maybe. <laughs> yes. We're. Uh, let's see. That might pop. Someone might pop in here. We'll see how that plays out. Anyway, so the crew member. There's a lot of crew members still on board. Um, for crew members that live in places that are a little bit more rare, it's hard for them to get home. They need to wait for these chartered flights. They're out to sea with no guests. They're not allowed out of their cabin besides two hours a day. Mm -hmm. The food's being delivered to their rooms. Um, luckily, most of them have moved up to guest cabins just to get a little sunshine and fresh air. Um, but it's it's tough, and yeah. they're they're away from their family. If they go home, they have to be in a mandatory quarantine for two weeks. Um, some of them are away from their boyfriends and girlfriends, which they look forward to seeing. So it's a really hard time. Did your cruise experience of being on board, right? Like you, you're always kind of on board and you're sort of isolated from the world in a way, right? But you're with a lot of people. Is, is that any kind of preparation for uh, being home and quarantined in a way? Or is it not the same thing? I think it's worse because like you, you're really sheltered from the media when you're on board. So right. they feel like they're the only ones stranded with nobody to talk to, but really we're all sort of self isolating and quarantining and social distancing, but they just, they have no guests to entertain and they're all like people, you know, people persons. Right. <laughs> so it, I would go crazy. Like if I didn't have Rusty is my husband, we met on the ship. If I didn't have him with me or, and there were no guests like I can't sit and watch a show even now like I don't know what they're doing it's it would be bad yeah be bad. another question from the travel um the the travel uh what do you call it the travel agency perspective of it yeah. um what do you advise anybody at this point that has say like a May trip coming up right they have a maybe not cruise uh maybe some other thing maybe a, maybe a, a trip to I don't know I, Ireland, Italy, Europe, whatever. What do you recommend? Are you suggesting at this point you need to postpone your your entire thing or what are you saying? Well, each, depending on what the trip is, each industry has different rules. Like for, I can speak for a cruise because I know what the rules are. Yeah. If you have a trip uh, up to right now, up to May 11th, and your cruise is canceled, you can get a future cruise credit for $600 and you can rebook anytime before December 31st, 2022. Um, so why not take that money? You know, please come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. if, if you were going to Italy or Europe, then I like, I would, I usually tell my guests what I would tell my family, just wait, like now's not the best time okay. to go right. on a vacation, but still go <laughs> just maybe plan it for next year. Um, yeah. But now is not, I don't think now's the time. And Jarrett, for you in New York City, right? I mean, people, that's yep. a destination. I mean, we live in this area, so it's not a destination. Well, I lived in the area, whatever. But uh, it, it's not a destination necessarily for us, but it's a definitely a destination. What are you telling people that are, you know, had this big New York City uh, trip booked? I mean, we've canceled every, Marriott's given us the okay to cancel everything through June 1st. 
Yeah. Um, no question. No questions. Not giving anyone a hard time. As far okay. as basic travel, we do have a pop in. Sorry, Jared. I'm going to let you. Yep. I'm going to let you. This is. This happens now on the show. This is a new thing where we let people just pop in uh, with things that are going on in their life. I'm. I'm sorry. I know it's a very important question, and it's a little bit awkward at the time that you popped in. Tim Hillman. Tim. <laughs> Tim is getting married on May 16th, and he's been popping in on every episode. Tim, has anything changed about uh, your wedding date or anything like that? Aww. No. No update. No update. No update at this time. Okay. We're hoping this week for, for a, a concrete answer, though. But you're still looking for an alter, alternate date, or are you going to stick with May 16th? Al alternate date. Okay, Tim, thank you for popping in. You're, you're, all, you're all good. <laughs> you're all good to go. There's no update on Tim's uh, wedding, really, yet. Okay, sorry, Jared. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just in case you were wondering. At that, home. That, that sounds like a smart decision to do an alternate date. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, I, go I mean, ahead. Sorry I, about that. I wouldn't tell anyone to go into New York. If they called me today, I don't know if I would actually do it. With my wife being pregnant, with me having a three-year-old, I would probably stay through my furlough date of, you know, end of May. Yeah. Um, with New York City being compact with as much as it is, I just don't know how safe it would be to go into the city. Yeah. Now, it's, it's just that when bad. you go back, I'm, I'm sure you're going to go back to, to that position at some point right i hope yeah i have yeah i mean i would hope so but elizabeth for you the wedding industry obviously i'm in that a little bit and i know that it's been greatly affected but for you what is advice for brides at this point in terms of that well i know um you know from the company's perspective uh we did we did end up closing all of our venues um, mm -hmm. across the board, um, and we did furlough um, most, if not almost, all of our employees except for a handful. Just to help including them. yourself, so you got to furlough yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a nice conversation, a little bit easier to, to have, right? I was like, you know, I was and probably in addition, I'm also furloughed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Um, yeah. But. Uh, and you know, Jeannie and Frank Capello, they're absolutely amazing uh, they owners. They, um, you know, really care about the guests, um, care about every single experience. And um, you know, in in terms of our clients, um, from what I understand, uh, postponements have been happening um, March, April, May. Yeah. Um, it's probably maybe going into like the first couple weeks of June at this point. Um, it's just, it's, a, you know, it's kind of a wait and see, uh, you know, I, we've got some clients kind of on a hold for like July, you know, and then the kind of questions are coming up as we progress, you know, another week, another week, another week. And it's, it's really, you know, up to the World Health Organization, the CDC, you know, following their guidelines and seeing kind of how this all transpires. Um, if it were me personally, yeah. um, I would I would probably wait a year. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Go ahead. I love this. Yeah, this is what, whatever happens, <laughs> happens on live at night. People just, they wow. ask questions and that's better when, when they do. Because sometimes my like, questions are, go for it. I got, I got married in my early 30s because I wanted to have kids before you know it wasn't before I had to wait too long so if this were to happen when I was getting married I would probably say forget it I'm just gonna have a small wedding and like get yeah. on with my life but w is there a charge for that for a cancellation instead of a rebooking it's a good question it's a I good know question taking it case by case um, they've been pretty lenient in terms of, you know, either like a rebooking, if it's going to be a rebook date and just moving, you know, those deposits toward the future date. Um, if it's a full cancellation, I really think they're just taking it case by case at this point. Yeah. That is a very good correct <laughs> answer, <laughs> but I think yeah. the answer is yeah. you're fucked. It kind of falls under like the force majeure, right? So it's right. kind of like an act above and beyond either party's control. Um, it's a very touchy subject. Um, 
So just it is no. I mean, listen. Every time contract. I've had wedding people and I'm on this to talk about that, and they've all you know, everyone's pushing postponements because everybody wants the brides and grooms or the ho who whatever industry you're in here to kind of just move the date along to another date. Because I mean, <laughs> you know, listen. The same thing about the trip, right? Like they 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 want to take that trip. I mean, I think for weddings, it's even a little bit different, right? Because they definitely want to get married. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. you know, the trip, they could be like, we should have gone on that trip anyway. You know what I mean? But like with the wedding, like they definitely want to get married. So they're going to more than likely try to postpone the date than cancel altogether. But <laughs> to, to, Jamie, to Jamie's point, I have had a couple of people tell me like, well, we're thinking about just canceling altogether. And it, that's a stressful conversation, right? And I, you know, I've even been seeing, you know, some very intimate ceremonies happen in, in somebody's living room or whatever have you, because it's like, that was the date that they wanted. That was the date yeah. that they chose. You know, they feel strongly because they found the person that they want to spend the rest of their lives with. And, and it's kind of like, I don't care what's going on in the rest of the world. I want to be with that person no matter what. And, mm -hmm. you know, what is an actual wedding? What does a celebration mean? Right. Um, and, and that answer varies from couple to couple, you know, so it's, um, it's a personal choice. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, we encourage the postponement, you know, because of course, we, we want to give you that experience, you know, you've, right. been, mm -hmm. you've been waiting for this day, you've been in anticipation of everything's been planned up until like the final, final piece. And now it's, Aww. like, ah, oh. Uh, yeah, Jamie, this is a little bit left field, but you mentioned were you uh, were you on a cruise when nine eleven happened? Uh, no, I, I'm not that old. Okay, sorry. <laughs> well, you mentioned it. You mentioned that people have compared it to that. Jarrett, were you working when nine eleven? When nine eleven? I was. I was a sophomore in college. Okay, all right. How about you, Elizabeth? <laughs> Nobody. Well, anyway, people uh, have been comparing uh, it no, to, to the nine eleven feeling. You know, that's a, I've had that comparison quite a bit. I mean, I, I was in my internship at the time, and they actually told us not to show up that day. And I, it was three states away. Yeah. But just I mean, for... I think there is a little bit of a similarity, but this is just something that's way different. But, Jamie, I guess my question... And for all of you... Um, you're all in industries where, listen, it's a social event, right? I mean, particularly the cruise industry, I feel like it's, there's, there's so much, you know, just people being around each other. And I'm down with it. I, I, I cruise every year, twice a year. Um, but, you know, I mean, now do you think that cru the industries, in all of your industries, hotel, wedding, do you think people are going to be fearful about jumping in on a, on, a, on, a, on a cruise or, you know, their hotel yeah. stay or whatever? Yeah. That's a conversation I've had with a lot of my friends that are cruise directors, actually, because I, I asked them, you know, on one of the smaller ships, what percentage of first time cruisers do you have in every voyage? And the last ship that I worked on was the Carnival Paradise, and it was about 50 to 60 percent first time guests. How many people are going to want to jump on a cruise after this? Like, whether or not it's safe or whether or not the CDC says, oh, all of a sudden it's okay to go on a cruise, like people that are a little bit older or not in optimal health, they're not going to want to jump right. on the ship. Um, right. We kind of think that, that they're going to roll out small, you know, fill a few ships and then roll out the rest of the industry. And that's just um, my speculation. It's not official in any way, right. but it's not profitable to sail with ships half full. So it's better to sail 12 ships full than 26 ships with 40%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see how it all rolls out. I don't know, but what's so fucked? What's so fucked up about all of it is like they have a lot of really awesome new ships coming. Like we're booked on yeah. the, what, the Mardi Gras, you know, in November. But more than no, likely, we're we're gonna we're gonna like probably <laughs> shift that to a twenty one cruise. You know what I mean? I think you're gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Thank you. Yeah. Like that is not that yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I told. Christina, the other my wife, I said, I was like, uh, I don't know if this Mardi Gras thing is happening, and it's that that cruise was already shifted, by the way. But yes. the whole other story yes. for another day. We're not going to do oh. that, right? Well, the construction for the the ships that are like the Radiance is supposed to be in dry dock right now, but it's paused indefinitely because it's happening in Spain and there's no construction mm -hmm. there right now. And then Mardi Gras is being built in Finland. I think it has 
definitely slowed down. I will tell you on our travel agent portal, the first voyage available for the Mardi Gras is March 27th. So if you needed help looking that, we'll talk after the go. show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, that's my guess of when it's coming only because that's the first cruise that I can book a guest for right now. You, you, do you just, you don't just exclusively, exclusively book the carnival cruises anymore, right? You, do you book the other ones as well? Or are you just exclusively carnival? I can book all the cruises and I yeah. have booked all the cruise lines. I, I can really be confident knowing what I'm saying. With the carnival, carnival, but totally. No, no, all. no. I get that. I <laughs> yeah. Get that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. Okay. Anyway, Jarrett, what do you, what, what do you think moving forward in terms of people wanted wanting to go to hotels or even just the restaurants in the hotels, right? Are people going to want to hang out in these group settings anymore? I think it's a tough question to really answer, but I think it's dependent on the city. Mm -hmm. um, New York is going to probably get hit the roughest, where a city in the Midwest might be okay, um, right. every, because every state's been hit differently. Um, yeah. that, that's, that's the hard part, or the hard part of the question, because I think certain states are going to open up a lot faster than something like Times Square. Yeah. Um, as much as I want it to open, it's just, like I said earlier, it's just not safe. Yeah. Um, it's not safe for travelers, let alone the workers. Um, yeah. So. And what about you, Elizabeth, in terms of weddings and whatnot? What do you think? I mean, like, we're both sort of in that field. And fuck, <laughs> you know, is it going to be, are people going to want to have 200 plus people at their event? Will they even be allowed to do that? You know? Yeah. I don't, well, let me look at my crystal ball. <laughs> well, it's, it's a speculative. <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth. It's a speculative. Crystal goblet. <laughs> yeah. uh, speculative, I, yes. I, I wish I knew. We just, um, just got to wait it out. You know, it's, uh, you know, like Jared said, it's kind of tough to tell, you know, even, even personally as a guest, you know, do I want to be surrounded by 200 people? You know, how right. are the table configurations going to be laid out? You know, in this kind of Do you want grandma uh, Jean to come to the, you know, right, right. Um, can you she know, come to the wedding? You know, <laughs> if she comes to the wedding, she could die. You know, you know, you know, you want that I'll, on your conscience. I'll put that on your invitation, though, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come, yeah. Um, that, that's the way to handle it. Come to our wedding, you may die, right? <laughs> <laughs> Escape yeah. room. You know, right. we saw we saw restaurants, you know, removing tables and and doing, you know, larger space in between, you know, table arrangements, but like, you know, a city like New York City, yeah. you're so used to like, right on top of each other, you know, and, and the next guest is, you know, literally, you know, could pick off your plate, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know, there might be some interesting changes to come. Um, do you think, and that's a good question, Jamie, do you think there'll be, like, I was, I was doing a restaurant one the other day, and they were saying that they think there might be some new rules with restaurants, right? You can only have, I don't know, 50, 50 people or 100 people in the restaurant at this particular point, right? Uh, you know, if you have a 200-seat restaurant, you can only put 100 people in. You can't stick people at the bar. This is speculative. People are saying yeah. that. Do you, do you see there being a statement like, you can't have a 3,000-person cruise. You can only have a 1,500-person cruise. I think that would be I, crazy. Yeah, I don't know what, what the point is, right? Because, like, what does that mean for, like, a show? You have to sit six feet away from somebody. Or mm -hmm. at the deck party, can you imagine, like, having the lines like they have at the grocery store? Like, you must be this far away. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has a lot of room to keep and shuffle all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> or to what? You have know, very limited uh, contestants in the, the Harry Chest competition, right? Oh, yeah. oh man. Yeah. I like <laughs> I, I, I'm sad that I left the cruise industry, but if that were the case, I would be even sadder to still be there. Right. It's like the best feeling is being up on that stage and seeing that whole area packed. I, it's of outrageous. People. To this day, like the last cruise we did in December, when a hairy chest competition pops on, and we talked about this on the pop up podcast, but it just, it just, yeah. it's, we're all there. You know? but, exactly. They come out of nowhere. But yeah, I mean, me said, too, by I the way. I, I saw it, right? So I was with one of them, yeah. You were in it, I'm sure. No, no, I wasn't, I wasn't. Yeah, I um, mean, I but, tried but, out, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, as you said, I think it is going to be very different state to state because now I live in Texas and yes. it's 80 degrees here. As you can tell from our attire, we're in t-shirts, the California and Texas person, yeah. and you guys are in sweatshirts up in New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's all like, today. You know, yeah, I'm, no. Oh, it's beautiful <laughs> out here in LA today. Yeah, I don't Jared and Elizabeth don't know maybe, but I moved to Los Angeles this 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 last week. Yeah. I don't know. No, I, I, I had no idea. Yes, I yeah, I know, I know. I, I have not made a big formal announcement about it. But Christina got a great job out here, so I was like, and I wanted to do a little more TV stuff that I've been working on and all that stuff. So I was like, this kind of makes. Oh, congrats! Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll still be back for all my events in case you're an event person that's watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll better get a new She's, videographer. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, the guy that, that we work awesome. with, what, what's that? I said, I'm jealous. Oh. Well, you got 80 degree weather. He's got probably about the same. And, 75. And it was 70 today. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Not yeah. even in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the guy that we're working oh, with that so does the boat. Oh, yeah. we're warm down here. <laughs> uh, our boat rental partner, he said that it's been the busiest season he's ever had because people are thinking about what the thing I can do by myself. So they're renting boats. They're going golfing. Like they're not sitting at restaurants, but right. there are still parts of the hospitality industry that are doing okay down here. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you about being in Texas. You know, I mean, I just drove cross country for the move because we have two dogs and, uh, I was able to stay at hotels. Yeah. You know, and when I got to the Midwest, we, we did Northern route, but when I got to the Midwest, none of them understood what was happening. No one's wearing a mask. No one's wearing gloves, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, yes. But once we got yes. to LA, it was like designer masks. Yeah. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's so from that aspect, I was wondering about Texas in terms of where do they stand? I know where Jersey and New York sort of stand because before I left, I saw how that was. Now you have, you have every to wear day, a... you know, Murphy every day. I saw that, but yeah. yeah. In, in order to go into the supermarket, you have to have a mask on now. Yeah. Oh, no wow. Yeah. It's, that's, in that's LA, it's the same. Yeah. Yep. I had to wait for, for to go into a grocery store here. Like oh, wow. today. they later let, yeah. let us go in at a particular time then there's some asshole not wearing a mask and then i'm like what what's what what the what the fuck bro you know what i mean <laughs> i'm not even a, like i'm not even like that diehard with the mask you know what i mean but i was like <laughs> you're in the grocery store this is a place to wear a mask you know mm -hmm. it's just like it's and been so, crazy anyway I'm, i go in like fully i'm, I'm like it's cognito like, oh wow <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> wrong so with it there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I don't want to kill 10 people because I got this thing, you know? I think probably Texas is a lot more laid back than I was wondering. I'm yeah, yeah. Um, I, I haven't been to the grocery store for about 10 days, My like, because there's been some crimes and stuff at the yeah. store. But honestly, t 10 days ago, I went with my baby because we were just trying to get out of the house. We weren't wearing a mask or anything, but it scared me to go there because I saw those tapes spaces and there's those announcements like you are now entering a location that could be dangerous and i'm like okay this is i don't <laughs> want to go back so i haven't been back since then um but like i went to see my friends that they opened up like carry out at the hotel today and one out of four of them wore a mask i went to the construction site i was there with like four other people we were outdoors but nobody had a mask on so we do have cases in my county but it's I mean, we're watching the news about New York, and I just talked yeah. to my aunt who lives in the city. We're not as, um, like, we haven't taken as many precautions as those places. Jamie, for you, sure. wait, did, where were you originally from? Michigan. Yeah, so okay. I yeah, I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're not I remember so your little ID, there. Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really remember that, but I remember she told me that at some point. Yeah. So, yeah, Michigan is, is pretty hard hit. So, my yeah. friends up there are very cautious. And not that we're not, but we're like the last to the party here in texas for everything now uh Aww. new york's the first new york's the first is the sorry guys one of the hotbed no, no don't okay. apologize okay. hi parker um, i'm gonna ask she, you guys to, it's time for yeah. her to go to sleep <laughs> i'm gonna ask you guys a question that we ask and we, this has got nothing to do with the coronavirus this is a question that we ask all of the industry people what in your world whether it be weddings hotels or cruising do you feel uh, is there's this great phrase that my a friend of mine Melissa and I always say to each other when we go to a wedding? I'll be like, 
<sighs> again with this shit, right? But it's just a joke. I don't really, I really don't mean it, but what is your <sighs> again with this shit moment? Either at a wedding, a hotel, or a cruise. I'm gonna go to the. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to Elizabeth first because I'm sure she's got many of them. Oh, God. Attending? To, to, attending? No, as or? as working in the industry. What is your one pet peeve, sort of, of the industry that you're working in? What is it that guests do, or or that wedding guests do that just just or it doesn't have to be that. It could be anything. Oh my God. I know. Well, this is a fucking left left hook. Interesting. Um, you want to pass and go to one of the other contestants? <laughs> <laughs> we had time to think about it now. <laughs> um, I guess for me, um, I kind of transitioned from weddings into corporate, and I yeah. guess um, just with the transition alone you know, like we work so hard on proposals and, and getting rates and getting quotes. And it's a lot of, you know, back and forth with the venues and to put everything on a silver platter. Okay. We got to pop in, but go ahead. Yeah. Did just give us an answer either yes or no, or did you receive it would be awesome. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, you know, I think that's a great answer to your, to the that, question. Like, in the air. I'm like, did you? Yeah. Now answer? for me with weddings, I would say my, again, with this shit moment is whenever a, maid of honor or best man is about to give a speech and they start off with, uh, for those of you that don't know me, to me, <laughs> <sighs> with this shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Jared, what is your again with this shit? I mean, because I work on the hotel side, I think my biggest pet peeve is when you get this celebrity or non-celebrity and they just can't be stuck in a standard room. Yeah, I mean, okay. we have so many x amount of sweets this that or that um and i deal with it all day long i mean i think that's that's the biggest challenge is so, so when rooms, a celebrity comes in IDs. and it's the room is not right you may whisper to yourself <sighs> again with this you shit can, you can leave bye <laughs> there's the door <laughs> A diamond member. I love it. I feel like I might be someone again. With you. Okay, Jamie, this is a hot one for you. I feel like there's multiples for you. For... Yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the first one I think you'll know because as a guest, I think it's the same for the guests as it is with the crew. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, we have a pop in. We do have a pop in. Okay. Let we'll, him go. Before we'll you get go, to we'll your, get uh, yeah. Chris, are you ready for a pop in? Chris, you had a crazy story that <laughs> happened to you today. Oh yeah, I'm ready. Okay, go for it. So he's going to share a crazy story that happened. This is a new thing that we're doing. Interrupt the entire discussion. By the way, this is a travel industry, how affected coronavirus is. So I hope that whatever story you're going to tell is, uh, is not too wild. But go ahead. Go for it. Okay, I think it's along the lines of the coronavirus subject. Okay, go ahead. So what, ha what had happened <laughs> okay, so to you today? Today I was Pop stopping it. at a, uh, a fast food chain called Steak and Shake. And oh I, I noticed... Uh, a young woman uh, hanging out in the plants by the building, okay. uh, rub rubber, you know, running through plants and whatnot. And I'm like, man, you that's said weird. rubber. What do you mean by rubber? Uh, running through, run through. Okay, so rubber was not a word there. Okay, no. <laughs> just to be clear, um, just to be clear. So uh, I I get to the drive through, and my car is now ten feet away from this young lady, and she looks over at me and she's like, hey, would you mind giving me a ride to the gas station across the street? Oh, I would say no immediately. Does she have a mask on? No, uh, <laughs> no, she had a, a sundress, uh, tall blonde hair. Wow. Uh, okay. Had, wow. Uh, a bag yeah, maybe, of. Yes. I don't know what you were gonna do with that. Yeah. yeah okay. She had, a, she had a bag uh, in her hand, and uh, one of our so regulars, she's like, Chris Rockwell. She's like, yeah. she's like, finish your drive through, and I, uh, I'll hop in the car. I'm like, all right, cool. I I don't even get to the drive through uh, order. She hops in the car. There you go. Okay. And I'm like, okay, this is really weird. And uh, I do a thing where I set my passenger seat really high. So whoever has to sit in it has to sit in my car uncomfortably. And uh, <laughs> How David Letterman of you. Yeah, I don't she's, know. she's tall to begin with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now her head is like this in, in my car. And uh, I'm, look, I'm l looking over at her. She looks like disheveled and whatnot. And just like she's been up for days or something. So I get to the the ordering uh, window, and I look over at her. I go, "Would you would you like something to eat?" <laughs> nice, very nice of you. Yeah. She doesn't even hesitate. She's like a diet Pepsi. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. 
So I feel like I'm on this line forever. At this point, I think she's going to rob me or kill me or something. Right. And uh, so I go, where are you from? And she's like, Maitland, Florida, which is around here. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then it's like quiet. So I go, so you're from Maitland, huh? And she goes, I wish. <laughs> Wait, so she's not from that area. Okay. Now I'm really confused. Right. Uh, so I, I get the food. I get to the stoplight. The gas station's right across the street. It feels like it's taking forever. She then says to me, how long, how long does it take for a baby to have a heartbeat once you're pregnant? Okay. Oh, you're, 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 oh God. Yeah. I go, I, I don't know. I thought she was setting me up for a joke. She goes, can you Google it for me? Okay, your Wi-Fi now. Okay, so I'm at the, I'm at the red light and I'm Googling it. And I'm this like, really, wait, this really happened, this story? Is this not a makeup? It's 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock this okay. afternoon. Okay, life in Florida. Okay. And uh, <laughs> You're so, a Florida uh, man telling a story right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Google said six weeks. So okay. I go, six weeks. She starts doing the calculation in her head. And she's uh -oh. mumbling. She's like, well, I'm on week one, okay. two, three. Green light. I drive across the street. I drop her off at the gas station. She starts coughing all over my car. Oh, God. So there's a good chance I have coronavirus. Thanks, Chris, folks. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm confused. We, we might drop the pop-ins. They're not really all that good. Anyway, uh, Jamie, <laughs> going, going back to uh, going back to the the most annoying, most thing. annoying, yeah, or the yeah, the the uh, again with this shit moment. Yeah. What as a guest? What do you, on a guest as a, on the cruise ship? What do you think it is? Hmm. That would annoy. That's a different. That's person. okay, but that's that's gonna be a that's gonna be a different answer for me. I feel okay. Like. Okay. Well, as a guest, what is it? Okay, because there's multiples. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, the <laughs> yeah. first thing that popped into my head is safety briefing. Oh, that that's where I was going. Yeah. Okay. okay. So <laughs> for both of us, it's for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I was lucky as cruise director because I got to sit on the bridge, which is air conditioned, and play on my phone while everybody else was like in their positions guiding guests to their muster stations. So I just like waited till I heard on my, the radio, Jamie, go ahead with the next announcement. So I was actually doing way better than everyone else at that point. But well, um, <laughs> I, I will tell you, one time I was I I went on a cruise out of Long Beach, my wife and I. <laughs> I can't believe I'm sharing with Jamie. I think you might have been the cruise director, but uh, maybe not. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I just was fucking done with muster station. I was done with the safety break thing. I just, I, I wanted nothing to do with it. This is maybe about uh, 10 years ago. Okay. So it's, it's maybe, eight, maybe five or six years ago. So we were Miracle? at the Mongolian, we were on Mongolian walk. <laughs> we were at Mongolian walk and mm -hmm. I said, uh, I, I'm, I, I, we were sitting there eating Mongolian wok. It was, and they were like, okay, we got to do a mustard station. And I said to Christina, I was like, we're, we're, we're not going. going. We're not going. <laughs> they caught you I said, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to eat my, uh, our Mongolian wok. I'm not going. I don't care how, how, how much they push this. I'm not going. And then eventually one of the dudes was just like, eh. Supposed to happen like yeah, that. No, it, it was not supposed to, but I was like, <laughs> then I thought, like, maybe we could do that every cruise. And then, uh, no. Now it it's didn't really, work out so well. Now it's even way, yeah. way bigger. Yeah. Even if you don't go and you like try to hide in your bathroom, they still find you. And then they pound now you have to on the check door. In. Yeah. Yeah. You have have you guys ever been on a cruise, guys. Elizabeth and Jared? Have you guys been on cruises? Nope. Uh, yes. My husband. So you know. I yeah. did one cruise uh, <laughs> a couple years ago. I, I actually, when people tell me that they, oh, I won't go on cruises, blah, 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 I, 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 get so, I get so angry, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just like, it's the, like, I was that person before I went on my first cruise, right? I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. You know, I don't want to see too. a song. Me too, me yeah. too. And then I went on it and I was like, this is the greatest vacation I've ever been on in my life. Like, there's just so much available to you. Uh, and now, you know, what, what, sorry guys in the hotel industry, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but Jamie, like, I feel like the spaces just to go back to the coronavirus thing, I feel like back in the day when people would go on cruises, there was sort of like people congregating in areas. Right. Yep. But absolutely. I feel like the newer boats for sure have spaces. Right. So there's the sushi lounge, 
there's the steakhouse, there's the mm -hmm. casino, there's the stuff going on upstairs, there's your own room. I feel like there's enough spaces now where there shouldn't be so much concern about always bumping into somebody. In the last few years that we've cruised, I feel like there's more space between, uh, between the guests. Whereas like when we went to Cuba together, um, and I say that like we went together, but we, she was. <laughs> we, we were on the same ship. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, obviously that's a smaller boat, so there is more, you know. Yeah, there's more, there's less lounges in that ship than the newer ones. You're, you're absolutely right. But does that mean they're only going to bring the newer ones back into service? No. I mean, the, the older ones actually make more money because they do shorter voyages. People go for three, four or five days. They spend money in the bars and the casino. Can I say balls to the wall? I yeah, don't know. no, definitely. Yeah, this show we can say whatever you want to say. Yeah, um, but yeah, they they really they, it's like a small time frame, so a larger splurge as opposed to the seven day where it's like they people budget and they have yeah. to spend a certain amount or you know it just depends on the on the demographic. But um, the other thing, which is kind of an old school thing, yeah. is we would say, oh, these cones. But when we say cones, we mean guests that are getting in the way when we're trying to get to where we need to go. Because <laughs> like, we have to get to the other location in X amount of time and these guests are just like in the way looking at all the lights. <laughs> and so we just say all these I would cones. say for a guest, <laughs> um, this is maybe not funny, but it is to us, um, because we, we've been into so many we've been we've done so many cruises that we've been to a lot of the same ports over and over again mm -hmm. jamie and i have now taken over <laughs> but uh but so <laughs> but, and that's okay so anyway we talk a lot yeah we so whenever we go through the um like when we get off the boat and everybody's taking the pictures Chris, christine and i will say again with this shit <laughs> you know yeah. taking the fucking bahama picture we have the cozumel picture you know what i mean yeah that's true especially for us too because on a late arrival we just need to get the guests off quickly so there's not a big line up to deck three but the people are freaking taking pictures and the hotel director allows this to happen because it makes money later on and we're like just let the guests go so we can mm. clear the ship and Go on with our day. All right, Elizabeth, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. You're a bride getting married in ter inside of this pandemic. What Ugh. would you do? I'm going to – Jared, you're next. He's a bride? No, well, he's a groom. That, that, he was, a, he a, was a little bit of a groomzilla. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rachel's, la <laughs> Rachel's laughing. <Yep>. Yeah. <laughs> A little Take bit, a little bit. Yeah, I know I met Rachel, like, maybe, I don't know, the day of? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. You mean she didn't call you late at night to do a song or a video of this or that? No, she she was fantastic. Anyway, go ahead, uh, Elizabeth. What would you do? I'm not saying that because she can hear you. <laughs> no, she was actually very fantastic to deal with. And you were as well, by the way. Yeah. Uh, hmm, that's, that's tough, you know. I um. For me personally, my, my husband works for Homeland Security and Office of Emergency Management for um, the Jersey City Police Department. So he's called out to uh, some very interesting calls. And um, there were a couple times where I didn't think he was going to make it back home. So for me, I think no matter where we got married, I think it, it was, it'd be more important to get married, whether it's in our living room or... So you would have gotten married virtually, maybe. Yeah, only because every day is a gift. And uh, when you know that you found somebody and you found your soulmate, it doesn't matter what's going on in the rest of the world. You know, you, you know Very that sweet. your friends will be there, you know, hopefully. Very um, sweet answer, yeah. So, yeah. Fuck it, I'd cancel it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And then we'll uh, party later. <laughs> yeah. Jared, yeah. so what would you and Rachel have done if you were in this pandemic scenario? I no, I, I'm so curious about your answer, but I'm all, is Rachel nearby where she can pop in with her answer? Yeah, she's laughing. I yeah. mean, honestly, I would go the virtual virtual route and postpone a party for at least a year. I'm with you on that, yeah. It, just, just because of where we're living. It, maybe if I was in the middle of the Midwest, I'd change that answer. Mm. But being in New York, New Jersey, absolutely not would I put 100 people, 200 people in a, in a venue. Yeah. It, it, you, you just can't. I mean, yeah. Jamie, what about you? 
I had a small wedding anyways, um, so I would still have a small wedding. It was literally just my brother, sister-in-law, mom and dad, and Rusty and I. I felt really, I, I had already had a lot of big moments with the big parties on the ship, so I was like, there's no way I'm going to beat New Year's Eve on a cruise ship, so let's just do a small wedding. Mm-hmm. Well, I just wanted to have a photographer there, so I would have pictures to show my kids, Sure. and um, like his family couldn't come anyways because of uh like travel and you know it would have just been too expensive to fly them over for a wedding um we would have had to pay for it so we didn't want to start our life like that but um yeah so we would have been fine just doing a small small thing so interesting about all of the industries that we're in that there are no just mentioning new year's eve or whatever in most of for all of us i'd say right that there's no there is no weekends. There is no like, oh, I can't wait for Friday, for, especially for Jamie, you know. Um, there is no holiday. There is no, there is, and it really isn't a lot of that, you know. Um, but now we're in a situation where we're all stuck at home and there's all of that. Jolly about your mindset. We're all safe at home. Right. Yes. But so that's, that, that is very true. Yeah. Um, but what's your thoughts on that? You know, are you, as I, I, I think the three of the four of us are social sort of social butterflies, right. In the worlds that we're in. Right. I mean, we're, we're mm-hmm. I know Jamie, I would say you're a social butterfly. You didn't get to leave the boat very often, but you, you know, on the boat, you're a social butterfly, right. You're, you're constantly moving around and, and whatnot. And, and both of you as well. How has that been for you guys where your wings are, are, you know, and I think people watching this, your wings are seemingly clipped, right? I mean, there's, there's, there's people out there that are struggling with this as well. There's social butterflies and struggling with that. How are you coping with that aspect of not being social? Elizabeth, let's go with you. Uh, so I grew up as an only child for okay. my life. So I was kind of used to doing things on my own or being by myself and having kind of me time. Um, and then when we, when I got into the event industry, it was a lot of long hours, sometimes, you know, 10, 12 hour days, back to back to back to back, crazy weekends. I mean, when I was at Weston, we were doing NFL teams on top of a 700 person South Asian wedding. So I got Tom, you know, Brady come in, horse really? over here. it was crazy. Yeah. So to have this downtime, it's, it's kind of nice in, in that sense where, you can kind of sit back, take a breath, read a book, you know, maybe find a hobby that you weren't used to. Like I've been cooking up a storm all of a sudden just to keep me busy. Um, nice. So for me, you know, it's been nice. I do miss the social aspects of like going to work and then like, get it, let's go grab a drink afterwards, you know? So like we've been trying to maintain that on Fridays at five o'clock happy hour every Friday with our friends on, on the Zoom. Zoom or house party or whatever. So that's kind of cool. Oh, you're not like, allowed to mention house party on Zoom. No. I'll know we'll be able to be live tomorrow. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, just uh, yeah, for me, you know, I, I've, I've been dealing with it. Okay. I think Last week, it started to get to me a little bit, only because I had been in the house for so long. Um, and then I went, finally went to the grocery store because I had to, and that was like the highlight of my day. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just enjoying my family and um, being home with the dogs and just thankful that uh, I'm a high risker. I have asthma. So, you know, for me, I have to be very careful and uh, mm. kind of protect and we're And, you know, and obviously for Joe, you know, he's a cop, right, in in Jersey City? Yes. Yeah. So we're thinking about him too. Jared, uh, what's your thoughts on that? The question. I mean, it's completely changed the way I do everything. I mean, I have no connecting with anybody. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I went from, I have six managers that report to me. I've got a team of 13 event managers that I work with on a daily basis to dealing with a three-year-old that tells me that I'm not doing something correctly. So, um, <laughs> you, you, you know, it's, 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 de- it's definitely a change in scope of how I have to think about things or what I'm doing on a daily basis. I, w- I went from talking to tons and tons of people and being social. At this, almost at the center of all of it, right? Yeah. I mean, I had thousands of people that I got to talk to on a daily basis to, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love talking to, to Rachel and my three-year-old Harper, but I know what you mean. You know, I I can only talk Disney for so much. Right. So, 
We can only talk about the things we just binged for yes. so long. Exactly. Yes, that is what I think happened. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> yeah. Jamie, what about you? I know you're a social butterfly. Yeah, I really look forward to talking to people every day. But um, to be honest, with me working from home and Olivia still in daycare, not that much has changed. Sure. Um, I mean, I'm not doing my 45 minute commute and I'm going for a run instead, which I'm grateful to be back a little bit more active in that way. Um, I'm a little jealous of all those people that say they've got their house really clean because mine's still really messy. <laughs> yeah, mine's messy. <laughs> you have no excuse anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if if I were out of work, I would I would know what to do with myself. I already said I would go to nursing school just so I could like have a job in a year, like because I, I who knows how long this is gonna last. Like right. I would probably still try to keep Olivia busy and do something in the field that can help fight coronavirus, just because. Who knows how our industry is going to be after this? You know, are we going to have to accept new salary expectations? Um, who knows? Yeah. It's just so, so indefinite right now. Definitely. All right, guys. Um, I think we covered this. Um, if you were to just quickly think, and we, we probably touched on this a little bit. When do you guys think this is, in your opinions, where do you see us? Are, I mean, Elizabeth, you kind of indicated like 2021 is when we're in a, we're in a, in a clear space do you guys think that's what it is or what do you guys all think that the clear space of like some sort of normalcy is elizabeth i think, nor I, I okay. think normalcy is a hard definition or it's hard to define it mm -hmm. but i mean i have a conference coming in the last weekend in july we're full steam ahead um and in weddings i have a whole bunch of julys and they're just they're they're ready to rock yeah and that's going to be the first event for the hotel is, is kind of where we're looking at. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, I have groups that are looking to cancel for October. Right. So yeah. I've had that too. I mean, which is, yeah. Right. Yeah. But they're, but they're having to pay and they, they think that it's going to go on all the way till October. But right now we're slated to open up or at least have meetings and events come June 1st. We right. don't have any meetings on the books. I think there might but... be some people taking advantage. I'm not saying that those people are, but I do feel like some people might be taking advantage of the virus. I mean, like if you're oh, a, a October or November, 100%. like you don't have to re reset, you know, like not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Who said that? Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth, what do you got? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I would, I would hope to say that August, September, October, we would be in the clear. Um, it's just, it's so hard to tell. I mean, especially where we, like Jersey City and, you know, New York City are, it's just, uh, it, it, for me, I feel like it's getting scarier by the day. Every time I go to the grocery store, it's like now more, res not restrictions, but more preventative measures are being put into place. You know, everyone has mm -hmm. to wear the masks now, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be six feet apart. There's markings on, you know, the floor, Pe they won't let you in you know, the supermarket or Target or wherever. So it's, it's hard to say, yeah. um, you know, I'm hoping that if everybody stays home and we can kind of flatten this line that we can get things rolling, you know, end of July, August, September. But I heard, to, I heard today from somebody that they were thinking that there could be a resurge of this mm -hmm. September, October. And that's right. a scary thought. So, you know, I, I really don't know. It's, it's really hard. It's literally taken it one day at a time. Jamie? Um, well, for me, the hotel is supposed to open July 1st, so we're really hoping and praying <laughs> that that will happen. Um, I was listening to AM radio today when I was in the car, and the guy on the radio said that um, they're expected to find a vaccine by the fourth quarter, maybe like October, November, December, somewhere in there. And then it would take an additional three to six months to get that out to the public. Mm -hmm. And there are already um, health companies that are creating vaccines that have not yet been approved by the FDA. Just so if and when that does get approved, they're already going to have so many vaccinations ready to go. So they don't have to wait that additional time for production. So that's kind of scary because that's like a year away still, but at least the end is in sight. Um, I'm just worried about so many people on unemployment. What's going to happen with yeah. crime rates? What's going to happen? What are the 
the depression from being in your house all day long. So what, what other reciprocal mm -hmm. situations are going to happen as a result of this? Totally. All right, guys, this is how we're going to, how I wrap up. I usually, uh, I've been doing this whole thing about giving gratitude to the people around me, but before I give gratitude to the three of you, I would like to ask the three of you, is there somebody in your world uh, was maybe a mentor or somebody uh, that definitely helped guide you through uh, the pathway of getting you to your career or even just personally that you would like to shout out and give gratitude to? Uh, Elizabeth, I'll go with you first. Um, I would have to say one of my mentors, um, Elizabeth Winship, she and I, um, have been longtime friends in the industry and, um, and who that is, yeah. she's the one who actually pulled me into the social catering side of things and kind of helped my, my wings to span out and, uh, go out on my own, which has been really amazing. And then, um, I would say in the past two years, uh, a couple of really great mentors have been with, um, the personal development uh, networking companies that I've been with and uh, just nice. really focused on, you know, being gracious and, and having gratitude and taking it one day at a time and, and being in that right positive mindset to get us, to get you through the day. And for you, Elizabeth, my gratitude to you is I remember there was a time in my life where I was very confused and didn't know what to do next, but I appreciate the time you took with me. You spent a lot of time talking to me and walking me through that ledge of what to do. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna get into the whole specific, but I appreciate that so much. That time that you took was valuable to me. I could not have ever gotten through that time period without those lunches and, and whatnot. So thank you very oh, much for that. that. Yeah. And if you need a friend to go out to LA, let me know. Yeah, okay, <laughs> <laughs> Jared. I mean, I just think the gratitude goes to everyone that's working in Times Square right now. I mean, I've got a thousand rooms coming in on Monday. And I don't say me, but the hotel does. All those housekeepers that are gonna come in from not working and putting themselves on the line is, is a lot of respect for every one of them that's in that hotel right now because they don't know what they're getting themselves into. And I know they have to work, but I'd rather be safe than uh, having to go into that. Good answer, so. man. And for you, Jared, I appreciate so much that you and Rachel came into my lives and I got to film your wedding, get to know you a little bit. And you're always, I think you posted something about this, but you're always, uh, you know, always helpful with, hey, man, there's a room in this, this city. You know what I mean? Like, can yeah. you help me out? You know what I mean? And I feel like enough people are not giving gratitude to the people that have helped them along the ways in various places and whatnot. So thank you both very much for for all of it's that. funny you mentioned you mentioned that comment and I got so many text messages on that my <laughs> wife did not understand it but right. I thought it was funny it was in one of the chat boards yeah. of course that's not how I feel I know I, I know get, yes and it, it yeah. is it is it's an amazing how many text messages I got because people felt bad because they haven't reached out but it's right. just well, it worked both ways, but I mean, I, I definitely, yes, I appreciate you very much. And I, and, and, and thank you. So Jamie, I'm going to let you shout out a mentor and I got, I got um, a good one for you. So I can't wait. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, I, when I was younger, I worked with a mentor named Debbie Tedrick. She lives in Michigan actually. And she just, she told me when I was 10 years old, she goes, Jamie, you can make a big difference in this world and you've got a lot of power. You can use it for good or you can use it for evil and you have to decide what you want to do and what you want to be. And I'm still friends with her today. I talked to her a week ago. So she's always the person I bounce ideas off of and I just love her, love her to death. <laughs> so, so, and Jamie, for you, I would say, listen, you know, to that point that there are times when we go on a cruise and we're dealing with a lot of shit, you know, personally and whatnot but you always brought an energy that got us out of that and into what we're supposed to be doing, you know? And you. you're so hospitable, right? Which is great for all of the group here. I think you all are. And just, just a wonderful person, have a wonderful energy about you and a wonderful uh, just presence on the cruise ship. And as I've told you before on this show, I think you should be doing the cruise, uh, the thing that John Hell does. <laughs> I don't mean to throw him under the bus Thank through gratitude, you. and I love him very much, but you are an amazing human being. I'm, I'm grateful to you for doing this and you know that we've gotten to chat and whatnot. So, and to all of you thank guys, you. thank you so much for being here to talk about this. I hope 
somebody watching this uh, maybe, you know, can know that their industry is, we're all going through the same stuff right now, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we're in this together and we're going to come out of it. So thanks guys. I really appreciate you all being here. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. All right. Thanks.